Hello and thanks for joining me in this limited composting workflow series using Mocha Pro and Blackmagic Fusion. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects. And here's the shot we'll be working on. It's a straightforward composite involving changing the time of day, but it lets me show a few different ways that we can use tracking data and shape data from Mocha Pro in Fusion. Plus, we'll look at some compositing tricks using the standard Fusion toolset. We're working in Fusion Studio, but this workflow also works in the same way with the Fusion page inside of Resolve. In this first part, we'll be creating the initial track data that will drive the rest of the effects in this series. So let's start with tracking in the sky replacement. And here we are in Fusion with my final comp. And this shows some of the different ways that we could be using the same Mocha data in various situations. So we're going to be match moving in our sky to do the sky replacement. We're going to be using shape layers to help us pull a Luma key on the background. We're going to be doing parameter tracking with the lens flare that's going over the top here. And finally, I'm going to be doing some stabilization on the image as well, which is this section right there. But everything we're going to do stems from this, which is our Mocha Pro node and the data that we're going to get from that. And this is where it's all going to start from. So I have my original image over on the right and I have my sky shot over on the left. Now I can either come up to my tools and go to Boris FX Mocha and Mocha Pro, or I can use the keyboard shortcut shift space to bring up my tool selection. And I'll just type in Mocha Pro there and that will connect in. Now, before we come into Mocha Pro, I'm just going to take my background layer and pipe that into my insert. And I'm doing this even though I'm not going to be using the Mocha Pro insert module render. And we'll see why that's important in just a little bit. Okay, so let's come up and launch Mocha. And here is our clip in Mocha Pro. Now I'm currently in the Essentials workspace and this is where we're going to be doing our tracking. And let's come to our final frame and I'm going to create our first shape. And I'm going to keep this really, really simple. So I'm just going to use the X-Spline rectangle and just draw a shape around about the middle of the trees here. I use Alt and 1 just to show us the overlay there just so you can see that a bit easier. There we go. Change that color. And we're going to use this to track in the sky replacement. Now this is a straightforward shot. It's mounted on a tripod, so it's a nodal pan. And I've got nothing really else in the background um, on the horizon that's going to give me anything further back in the distance. So these trees are going to be good enough for me to track. And let's just come up to my layers and we'll rename this one background track. So I'm going to use a technique called unlink tracking. And to learn more about unlink tracking, then check out the unlink tracking exercise in the Mocha Essentials course. And I'm just going to go link track, none. So when I track this shot now, this shape is not going to move. And the first time you do this, this might seem a little bit weird, but Mocha is going to be generating up tracking data anyway. And it's just going to be using this shape almost as like a, a scanner in the background to sort of scan uh, where the pixels are moving to. Where the tracking data is actually going to go is obviously into the surface. And again, if you want to learn more about the surface, then check out the surface chapter in the Mocha Essentials course. Now I'm going to make the surface pretty big and I want it to cover pretty much the whole of the background where we're going to be putting the sky. And let's not overthink this. This is probably going to be good enough for now. I'm going to come into the layer properties and in my insert clip, I'm just going to uh, put in a grid in here, maybe a slightly finer grid, just to show you what the surface is actually doing. And the final thing before we track is to decide what the track motion options are going to be. What sort of movement is this going to be? Now, I might be tempted just to track in translation, scale and rotation just for the uh, for the sky replacement. But because we're on a tripod, the actual type of movement we're going to be getting from this nodal pan maps better to a perspective type of movement anyway. So I'm going to hit perspective. And let's track that backwards. And you'll see as the camera moves around that my shape in the middle that's tracking the trees stays 
perfectly static, but the surface where I've uh, mapped the grid to is going to be moving around and tracking with the shop. And this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. And when that's finished, we can just play that back. And we'll just check out our surface to make sure that everything's moving as we want it to. Nothing's slipping. It's looking pretty good. Okay. Now, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to kind of abstract yourself uh, with what these different shapes are doing. So there's no reason why we should be happy with just looking at this grid when we did spend the time to pipe in the sunset into our insert. So let's come over to the layer properties, change our insert clip to the insert layer, which is what we're taking from that secondary input. And that looks like the, the motion's tracking in, but I'm not quite sure if that's the exact angle that I want my sunset to, to be in. So let's come into classic mode. And classic mode is gonna open up a few more options for us because we have these other modules down at the bottom. I'm not interested in the shape layer anymore. So I'm going to turn off the overlays by going to view mat. I'm going to turn off the outlines by coming up to the top here and just turning off the outlines and turn off my quick transform up there. So now all I've got is my surface with the sunset inserted into it. And let's check out the insert module to really find out how we can fine tune our sunset into place. In newer versions of Mocha Pro, we have the ability to use blend modes directly in the insert layer to blend our layers together. So if I turn this to multiply, we can now see some of our background coming through again here. I'm going to press and hold down Z just to zoom us out a little bit. And I come up to my top toolbar and I'm going to use the scale here to scale up. And I use X to pan around. Let's scrub that through to see if everything's being covered. Yep, I think that's looking pretty good. Now, even though I've used the insert module to set up my surface, I'm not going to render out of the Mocha Pro plugin. I'm just going to export the tracking data. So let's come over to our tracking data again, make sure we have our background track selected, and go to export track. Because we're working in Fusion, we're going to go Blackmagic Fusion Comp Data. Now I can save this out as a .comp file, but I'm just going to copy this to the clipboard. Now let's save, exit out of Mocha Pro, come back into Fusion, and I'm just going to select anywhere in the, uh, in the flow and just paste that in. So edit, paste, or control, or command V. And this will bring in my tracking data plus uh, an input. It will automatically put a, uh, an input in here. And this is a loader node, but it's the same as what we were inputting into Mocha here. So I can just happily delete that. And we can pipe that in. So this tracker has everything that we need. I'll come into single viewer mode, actually one here, and you can see the trackers three, four, and we zoom out enough or pan around enough. We can see trackers one and two. So these tracker markers are fitting in exactly where we had the surface points in Mocha. If we wanted these in a different place, we would have set that up in Mocha Pro before the export. But how do we use this tracker data? Now in Fusion, trackers can also do some of the compositing work for us as well. So if I take my sunset and pipe that in to the foreground of the tracker, and let's make this active in the viewer, We'll come over to the operation and we'll choose what operation we want. We can either use match move if we just want to use position, scale, and rotation from our tracker center. So let's have a little look at how that's going to work. There we go. So that's transforming into there. Or I can use corner positioning to actually fit it in to the four corner points. Exactly how we had the surface set up in Mocha Pro and this is the one we want. And now if we play that back, we can see that my sunset is being positioned correctly with the surface points that we had set up in Mocha. And if you're just doing something simple like a screen replacement or a logo insert, then that really is all there is to it. You do your tracking in Mocha, you set up the surface, 
export the tracking data to Fusion Comp, copy it to the clipboard and paste it back in Fusion, setting up your operation either to match move or corner positioning. And we even have those same apply modes that we saw in Mocha Pro as well. And it just means you can do some of your composting directly in the tracker without adding any extra nodes. In the next part of this short series of working with Mocha Pro and Fusion, we're going to be looking at how we can recycle that same tracking data to help us create mask shapes to make this composite look better. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and I will see you again soon. Head on over to the training section of borisfx.com and you'll find Mocha Essentials, which is a free training series to get you started on all the ins and outs of Mocha Pro. If you'd like to see more training for Mocha Pro and Fusion, then please let us know in the comments below. If you've got any suggestions for the type of project you'd like to see, then tell me down there as well. For a free trial of Mocha Pro and all of the Boris Effects lineup, head on over to borisfx.com.